Hello everybody and welcome. I hope you've been enjoying our uh, most recent content. Today I'd like to do sli something slightly different while we are going to be watching one of the games and analyzing them. I also would like to talk about the recent changes in the meta. Uh, as you can see I'm playing Esper Midrange. A, a little bit of my own build, a little bit of net decking. Yeah, yeah, I know you're supposed to brew in your own decks, but I don't have the time or the interest in that. I like to optimize, you know, kind of polish an existing deck, make it more versatile. So now we are fighting against a, a mono green aggro from the looks of it, but it might change into gruel really quickly. So for that we are going to put up a Thief of Sanity. I don't know why, but the game tends to 99% of the time provide a removal any time I pull a Thief of Sanity, even if opponent did not have it. They always top deck that. With that being said, Going back to the meta, in the new meta I've seen there's a lot more super friends and a lot more control leaning decks. Even the aggro seem to be quite vulnerable to duress. After all, a one drop and, you know, taking out some of their important big casts is always a benefit. So I'm considering adding it into main board and two in the sideboard. Basically, after having had um, dealt with a high mythic, starting back in the Platinum, I have realized it is indeed, the game has indeed changed from the last month. And that's what makes what this game so exciting. You always have to adapt, you always stay on your toes. Of course, that doesn't is not good on your wallet, especially if you're trying to play the same deck uh, on paper. However, even good decks, uh, I have noticed, especially with this meta and the way the matchmaking works, uh, can sometimes really underperform. Like the, this deck, for example, I have been stuck for the past three days on uh, Platinum 4. But finally, just today, I went back to Platinum 3. And considering it hurts, man, it hurts considering I was at Mythic, now I can't climb out. You'll thank me later. <laughs> Now, with that being said, let's take a look. Might be a bad idea. Now, the question here, would taking out the... Um, the Pelt Collector here would be better? I do think so, actually. Yes, that was another mistake. So, yes, the right now we have a lot more luck-based draws. The cards that just straight up finish the game. Such as uh, Commander Dread Horde. Keep up the pace. Such as Mass Manipulation. Those cards are just so dangerous to play against, you always have to oh, think about those things. Thing and this teaches you to prepare against the meta. You just have to be prepared against the meta. Which made me reconsider my stance on my Raska's Contempts, so removing them from uh, two in the main board and one in the sideboard to just one in the main board is an optional thing. It's great against many things, you know, planeswalkers, creatures, and the uh, life gain makes it good against both aggro and control decks, even mid-range. Very versatile card. It's been, uh, it's been one of the most popular meta cards for a very long time. And in fact, I think it's, even since I started, it's been, uh, it's been one of the cornerstone, cornerstone cards. Regardless, let's see. Now, an important thing, Oath of Kaya, is that the Oath of Kaya's wording is a little complicated. Uh, in fact, in the tournament, we thought it only triggers once per each attack. Turns out it's per Planeswalker. So this is uh, an important rule to know. My opponent has just conceded because he was mana screwed. And after the board wipe... Now let's take a look at sideboarding. We are definitely dealing with something more aggro, so we are boarding in some board wipes. Uh, for this one, I have brought in Cry the Carnarium and Kaya's Wrath. It just gets a very nice coverage against just about anything, so that is um, that is quite good. Discovery Dispersal has always been a controversial pick for me, and in my latest version of this deck, I chose to remove it, simply because it really slows the deck down. Sure, you're able to take out some of the lands, but it's just too slow. That extra two mana and at best case scenario will be creating a bunch of tokens. And the way the things tend to ramp up quickly, as it stands now, 
makes the Hero of Precinct 1 combination not as good. I mean, Hero of Precinct 1 is a great card, but just Discovery Dispersal, that interaction is simply not good enough. So, let's take a look. Instead, adding two Oaths of Kaya seems to be an effective solution instead of Mortifies, because the Oath of Kaya being a 3-drop, doing 3 damage and healing for 3 is a great setback against, uh, the, against more aggro decks. Let's remove the... Uh, The elf. Because on his own, he is not gonna be that big of a problem. Now, here I actually made a mistake from what I'm seeing. The uh, I should have played Thought Erasure because that would allow me to surveil one and then search for a land. So that was definitely a mistake that I just made. My opponent is, however, is also mana screwed. Uh, we are taking a look on what he has. Ripjaw Raptor, th uh, Crisis. Difficult choice, difficult choice indeed. We've got Lyra, but we require a land. Lyra is a great sideboard piece against aggro decks. There is no way that it can be killed once, and my opponent is playing something janky as, I've, as far as I can see. I'm gonna take the four. I do not intend to block the those. Okay. Uh, receiving six. Yep, the taken out of this one is important. Ah, there. Let's have him uh, waste a few turns like this. Mm -hmm. This is a decent move, but I think it was a mistake not to use that Thought Erasure earlier. I'll protect you. You know, I should have, now that I think about it, in this situation I should have attacked with the Hero of Precinct 1. Uh-oh. Now, here's an important move. The second paragraph of this card triggers only if it is still on the battlefield. My plan was that he would adapt, and I would Raskus Content that guy, making him waste his 3 mana. Token is generated, but... It does not fight. I think in this case it might have been... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think this is indeed the best play. Now, with this I will be able to cast the Oath of Kaya and take out his second Growth Chamber Guardian. Growth Chamber Guardians can be a huge problem if you let them live. Now, having multiple copies of Oath of Kaya is not a very good thing, obviously, because it is a legendary enchantment. No hide Ferox, a 6-6. Six, six. Wow. Okay, three in the air. That is a problem. Let's, uh... I mostly did this for the surveil, of course. I... Do require ah uh, I made a mistake. I did need a land in that case. And here, yeah, I did need a land instead I should have moved that. 
So as you can see, this is one of the other unseen weaknesses of Discovery Dispersal. When you're surveilling with your Thought or Asher, if it comes up, you kind of wasted a surveil there. Now that artifact definitely gonna do a lot of work here. one more land see this now that I'm seeing the discovery dispersal was the one small card that actually lost me the game how fascinating how fascinating indeed especially in today's formats when it, the games are so fast in a single turn as soon as the opponent reaches six mana you they are able to cast like for Simic they are able to cast the mass manipulation and for uh, Sultai they are able to cast command the dread horde at which point the game is basically over. I really don't like those cards that just suddenly put you so far ahead it's impossible to recover without something like, I don't know, a board wipe. Like Commander Dread Horde was definitely a questionably designed um, questionably designed card, but it is what it is and we should always adapt. I have been pretty frustrated about these results uh, over time. But one should not think that way. Uh, as I was playing in a showdown, uh, my opponent uh, was actually bragging. Um, well, before I had matched him, it was a three-round showdown. In the first round we played, I won uh, because uh, my opponent was. It was a mirror match, but my opponent did not know how to sideboard against me. Um, in the second one, I played against an opponent who was bragging a little earlier how he was undefeated for a very long time and he would win the tournament. The prize for the tournament was an entire box. So, the uh, uh, my opponent was playing Gruul Aggro deck. Well, I had uh, I also fortunately was running a lot of removal in my main board. I won the first round. And in the second round, he was of course more confident because now he had cyborg against me, but so did I against him. Um, he had not, unfortunately, he had not drawn the right cards. Um, he missed a land drop for once, and I had the removal against his uh, uh, druid. So, that has resulted in him losing on the second round 2-0, breaking his strike. Now, of course, he was really frustrated about that, and that reminded me something that I should have had reminded myself, and I'm reminding you now, is that this game is all about averages. It's not about a single match, it's not about a single round, even though very small mistakes can culminate into wins or losses. Uh, your, uh, your, how should I say, career is not determined by a single win or a loss, unlike um, a lot of other sports. This is all about the curve, how well your averages perform. And this is why this is such an interesting game. You are trying to improve piece by piece, and in time, only in time, do you see the differences that you have made in your own performance. So it looks like my opponent is also stuck at two lands. I myself am getting a decent land drop. Of course I should also mention while we're at it, uh, when you see that your opponent is struggling in his land drops, you need to remember that they oftentimes have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of cards that are castable in their hand. As such, you need to prevent them from ramping and getting access to additional mana, that way you're able to basically purchase extra turns. We're saving our Tyrant Scorn. Because if he attacks me, I will let it, I'm gonna take it, but since he attacked the fairy, I do not want that. And so we destroy the Steel Leaf Champion. 
Wine there, that is a big problem. That's more like it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Ah, removal, the crawl harpooner. And now the wine mare, the anti-black creature. Ah, and they keep pulling the uh, Basilica Bellhound. Oh ho ho ho, now that one did hurt. Ouch. Ouch indeed. No hide ferox. Now this is a board that is not very... Yep, cannot block because it's black. Let's see. Let's see indeed. Now we are able to block the Null Hide Ferox. While only sacrificing a single creature. Brilliant thing to have against Esper, very decisive. However, also quite risky. Quite risky indeed. I think I pulled like all of my... Yeah, I pulled all of my Basilica Bellhounds. Alright, looks like they're stabilizing. We are gonna pull the same thing again. Let's see if we can draw something that can block, and yes, it did! It did block indeed. So, what we're gonna do, since the White Mare is a 5-3 creature, we require 3 attack power to stop that thing. So, we can use the Tyrant Scorn on the Basilica Bellhound to bring it back, force opponent to discard, and gain 3 life. But more importantly, it will create a token which will elevate our attack power to 3, enabling us to kill that wine there. It did look dire about 2 turns ago. But how quickly the tide turns. Uh, well, this may seem like a mistake. The goal here is to buy some time. Ah, very good. Yeah, I think it is time to block it for real. More land. Let's get some health up and put a bigger clock on our opponent. Let's see, another land. I'm fortunate for my opponent. And very fortunate for me. Eight. Eight to eight. I am not going to see this one. We're gonna do a little bouncing action. Same clock, no damage lost. Instead I have healed. And would have caused my opponent to discard, but not this time. I've got time. And Hero Precinct 1 goes down. I mean, I think um, Discovery Dispersal was good before the uh, these uh, Command the Dreadhorde and s the Mass Manipulation decks have became the main thing. Now the speed is essential. And so that was Victory. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to my thoughts on the latest meta. And we'll see you next time.